Hello everybody and welcome! In this video we'll be playing the plus one seasonal event. In this mode, whenever a unit is played, uh, we spawn an additional plus, uh, one power copy of that unit at the end of the row. A few points to note for this event, the first being that the plus one copy is spawned, not played, so we do not get an extra deploy ability. And for that reason, we may prefer to use units that either have order or passive abilities as both will give our spawned units some value above being a one power body on our board. And also note that the unit is not spawned until after the deploy effect is processed, so this may influence whether you do not wish to use units with the bonded keyword, as some will not gain any advantage from this. Of course units with both bonded and passive abilities, however, can immediately come into effect. And as spawned units are always spawned in the rightmost position of the row, Knowing where the plus one copy is going to appear may mean some units can immediately start to support them and keep them out of easy removal range. And finally, keep in mind that there are only nine spaces in a row, and the plus one event may mean you're putting down two units a turn, so do be careful not to overclog your rows. And basically for this event, we want more units with either orders or passive abilities, and fewer deploy units. Anyway, let's see the deck we'll be using in this video. So here's the deck we'll be using, and we'll be approaching this plus one event using a Threat Overload Squirtle deck. And we'll be combining movement cards with this, the newer Price of Power Spellatile cards, both of which will benefit by having plus one copies spawned, as they feature both passive and order abilities. And we'll start with the old movement cards. The Double Zana Sentry is a powerful support for any movement engine. When he's played in the ranged row, he will boost any allied unit that moves by one whenever that ally moves. And so any moving ally will gain plus two every turn, while well, these are both on the board. At the end of turn, the Dryad Matron will move to the rightmost spot on her row and boost the unit to her left by one. And the Matron has particularly good synergy with herself, as the pair of them will continue to swap positions at the end of every turn. And so this makes her very effective in the plus one mode. And she's actually quite useful here, because any plus one copy will always be spawned at the right of the row, which is the unit that the matron will boost. So any plus one unit will get an immediate uh, will get immediate support and boosted plus two, uh, boosted to two, if it is in the matron's row. And finally, we have the cat witcher. He'll bounce between our rows and damage random enemies on the opposite rows by one or two depending if we meet the adrenaline condition. And when playing these engine, uh, Cat Butcher, we look to get our sentries out first, because their boost will support the plus one copy of future spawned units. And so any moving unit like the Cat Butcher will come down at three power instead. In the same vein, we might also look to use our leader ability, Gorilla Tactics, to move our own units, which will boost them by two with an additional boost of every sentry we control. And so we want to use our leader ability with, along with some sentries on our board to boost our plus one units out of easy removal range. So those are the movement units, and we've probably seen them all before. And we usually just play them, most of them in the ranged row, and then just let them get to work. And we'll lead off with these cards as a way to get a foothold in a round, before following up with our newer spell tile cards. We'll start with the Sorceress of Dolbathana. Her order ability will ask us to create an, a Bronze Squirtle special card with provision cost equal to or less than her power. And of course this is bad news for the plus one copy, because she'll need at least four power in order to use her ability. However, if we use the four power Sorceress, she can create any of these special cards. Two of which will be boost, and we want tempering as we can use this to boost our plus one copy to six, and so that way she will have access to all of our bronze Squirtle special cards. And which we choose will be situational. We may just want another boost in order to support uh, any of our plus one units that we play, or we could use any of the removal options on enemies. And uh, so what we'll do is use the first sorceress to boost the second, so she can chain another special card. 
and if we do get access to our six forbidden cards, our best option will be the new Orb of Insight. The Orb may only start by boosting an ally unit by two and giving a vitality two, but it gets more interesting when it's in our graveyard. It has three counters, and one will be removed each time we play a special card. And once all three are gone, this card will play itself from our graveyard before being removed from the game. Now for example, if this was in our graveyard when we first use our sorceresses, then we would only have one counter left. And if we then played one more special card, we'd also get the benefit of this card. And the orb is even better in combination with another new card, the Elven Seer. And whenever we target her with the bronze special card, she'll spawn and play an additional copy of that card. And she can do this a maximum of one time. And we'll try to have Seer be the target of this new Squire Tile special. So if we have two Seers on our board, thanks to the plus one effect, we play an orb on one, we'll create a copy, we play that on the other, another copy is created, and we play that third spell. And if we then play even one more special card, it'll trigger the first orb we played, which changed to the second, then the third, and so we play four special cards in one turn. And the sort of play we want to run is to play the Sorceress, then play the Seer, then have one Sorceress use Tempering on the second, have the second use Orb on the Seer, have that uh, Orb be used on the other Seer, and so forth. And so we can chain several cards together in one turn. Our other big play will involve Francesca Finderbear. She's another new card with counters, and one will be removed whenever we play special cards. Once we reach zero, she'll spawn a copy of that third special card. So that means if both our Francesca survive, we'll be triple casting that last special. And note that we must always be mindful of the orbs in our graveyard when we play Francesca, as they could be played, which will trigger her ability, and we have much better options than playing an additional orb. In fact, we have three good options here. Oniromancy, Royal Decree, and Call of the Forest. And each of these cards we can use in order to tutor units or more units from our deck. And thanks to the seasonal mode, we'll be able to put six units on our board in one turn. And we could go for a movement overload, spell overload, or some combination of the two. So, this is where it gets more complicated. There are several ways which we can actually trigger Francesca. Obviously, we can play three special cards from hand, but that is the second worst option. The worst option is to have three orbs in our grave, and that would mean our next special card would trigger the chain. So, whenever we play Francesca, it's always wise to look at the grave to see how many orbs are there. However, if we only have two orbs in our grave, both ready to activate, i.e. on counter one and two, we could then use a tutor card, like Call of the Forest, in order to play Francesca. This will trigger both orbs, and suddenly both Francesca will be on counter one, ready to use in our next turn. But the best way uh, will probably be to lead off with our sorceresses, and then play Francesca. We can use one sorceress to boost the other, and use that one to boost the plus one copy of Francesca, bringing her out of removal range. And then, when we play our special card next turn, it will trigger both Francesca for our triple cast. And we can also try to use the Seer to accelerate our use of Francesca by playing a bronze special card from hand onto one Seer, then using the extra copy to boost any unit other than the other Seer. And we it's very important that we don't boost the other Seer because we do not want to trigger both Seers, as this will create three special cards and trigger our Francesca. And it's a little complex, and it'll probably take a little practice to get the hang of it, and it's probably better understood by watching the matches in this video. The card that synergizes nicely with all our special cards is the Whisper of Dol Bulthana. And we already get an additional copy, thanks to the plus one effect. But we can get even more of her whenever we play special cards. And the first time we play a special, the Whisper will spawn another copy of herself. And as we start with two, we actually gain plus six in value to every special card played. And we do have a lot of special cards being used in this mode, so do be mindful of overswarming your board, as we can only fit nine units in a row. 
and that also means our movement cards will not be able to jump between rows. So we must be careful when we choose to play Whisperer, as she can clog our rows, and as we're already adding two units when if we play a unit, this happens very quickly anyway. However, that being said, in a shorter round she should be fine to use, and note that if we do use our triple cast to shoot at her first, she will have already spawned four additional copies by the time our third unit hits the board. So she will play for 16 points in that instance. And having crowded rows can be valuable with a card like Gezris of later. So if we do have board space, we could triple cast into Whisperers, and then Gezris as a way to populate the ranged row, so Gezris' boost finds more value. Or, if you want to be really cunning, we could intentionally clog our melee row with Whisperers, and this will prevent cards like Gezras from moving. And this means that only his ranged passive will come into effect. Note that as we may stack our ranged row in order to, in order to enhance Gezras' boost, our opponents will probably stack their ranged row as a way to avoid Gezras' damaging ability. But by clogging our melee row, Gezras cannot move. So when his end of turn effect is used, he tries to move, but cannot, and so when he hits the opposite row, he is instead hitting the opponent's ranged row. Of course, in this mode, there may be enough units in this mode that it doesn't matter, but it is always a possible, uh, it is always good to consider as an option. So, those are our core cards. And we have a little bit of movement synergy, which can hopefully bait out any control options our opponent is running and we follow that up with our newer Spellatop cards. And we usually start with the Sorceress of Dolbathana in order to set up our later cards, and then start chaining cards together. And we try if we can get a shortish final round, we can then finish up with Francesca in order to triple cast our tutor cards, and suddenly ambush our opponent with 10 units in one turn. So, we'll just finish with a quick, quick flip through the rest of the deck. So we have Tactical Advantage, which we can use to boost a plus one copy of a unit and keep it out of removal range. And Elzo functions in much the same way as Whisperer, except that he will only trigger when we play spells. And that is Aneromancy or Orbivite Insight in this deck. So Elzo will spawn a random unit with the same provision cost of that spell in his row. And so a Neuromancy will play for more points in this mode, uh, points, so it is our preferred usage of Elsa. If we take a look at the 13 provision units, we see that there are 6. And uh, there's one dud, unfortunately, thanks to the Sunset Wanderers being nerfed in the recent patch. But the rest are worth quite a lot of points. And uh, the one thing we should keep in mind is one of the options is Keltalus. And Keltalus' ability is actually quite bad for us here, as we expect to put down more units than our opponent with our triple cast. And so we don't want it, and so this, for this reason we do not want it to trigger. And so we make sure Keltalus is, and as Keltalus is row locked, we make sure to play Elzo in the ranged row. And that way Keltalus' ability will not activate at the end of our turn. Of course, if we forget, or simply have no space, we can also use our Lunar ability in order to move her. And Elzor is our other option when it comes to using Francesca's triple casting. As we are Neuromancy into Elzor on the range row, then Neuromancy two more times for two more units, which will spawn four 13 provision units in our, on our range row, in addition to the other four units we will get from our deck. And Shiru's order will allow him to destroy all units with the same power as him. So the plus one copy will destroy all one power units. And as many of our cards do boost, we won't be at one power for our, our units won't be at one power for long. So we might be able to use this to take out several cards in our opponent's side. And as we do run several boosts and vitality in this deck, we can adjust Shiru's power until he matches our targets. And our leader ability can also be used in, uh, to boost Shiru, potentially in conjunction with the Sentry. And basically we have a lot of options for manipulating his power in order to get him to destroy what we want. However, the main reason I include Shiru is to deal with the Adaran Snowdrop combination, uh, 
which you can look up the details for yourself if you want. But basically, it's an excessive use of the plus one mode. And it's potentially recognizable by players running the Guerrilla Tactics lead ability, as we are. Uh, although we only have Masquerade as the combination as, by having tactics and movement cards. But if you do run to Squirtle Tactics, make sure to keep Shuru in reach or in hand as he can be used in conjunction with our leader ability in order to destroy all Adaran. And Dunker provides a nice hand buff which can help some of our engine stick. And she can also use her order in order to remove weaker plus one units. Ryan has three charges and each will allow us to do one damage. So with the pair of her we can potentially destroy six plus one copies which can be very effective. And she also has a deploy ability, so the played version of her will also gain seal if we control two or more other dryads. And a pair of Dunker or Dryad Matrons will meet the requirement, so it's not too difficult to trigger in the plus one event. And note that this is a deploy event, so the plus one copy will not gain the zeal. And we have some more boosting special cards, and we can use these as a way to protect plus one units, boost the sorceress, trigger orbs, set up Francesca, etc. And these tempering could also be Dry's Caress for the Purify, but I chose tempering in order to get a one power sorceress to six. Finally, I include a pyrotechnician, and he can make a good proactive play as he'll do four damage twice with his order ability. And we can, can combine him with our leader ability if we want to remove plus one copies uh, on our second turn. So that's our deck. And as always, the link to the deck list is below in the video description. Now, let's see how this deck plays. Squesme Evelyan. You see? You must hold it between your teeth, like so. Mankind is a virus. A plague. Say a Darien and Dol Blathana. Children giving parents up unto death. It is inevitable.
have you seen a fuse lying about, have you? The powers I wield were born at the dawn of time. The Vesh Feathers are from Hens. Now let them dangle a while. Enough. Have my thanks. <laughs> Do not make me beg.
Yeah, I work for the Polymers. Better than working for humans. Showing mercy. No point at all. There is no other way. I can never finish. Just one more feather and we're done. One should neither sing nor yell at the dinner table. It's rude. Crucial not to lose your head. <laughs> Now let them dangle a while. Ugh, oh, stop gurgling like that. Aaron has 
has shown us the way. We do what must be done. Show me the coin or sod off. The best beggars are from hens. I spend more time passing cabbage than I do eating it. Dole! Flasada! Learn to fletch. Yeah, I work for the Plumes. Better than working for humans. War will be our downfall. This I have seen. Are you fucking kidding me? Catnip instead of crowns?
If you're gonna fall, fall on the cabbages. Style! That's right. I like fighting with style. There's a great deal to be learned. A wee hint, don't you jiggle this?
there. Now let them dangle a while. By thus. Oh, stop gurgling like that. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. One more feather, and we're done. The only good one is a dead one. I could drown you in a single drop. Humans are scum. I prefer elves, dwarves, pixies even. Thank 
Quest We do what must be done. Problem four inches of steel could they solve? You're lucky to keep your heat. Style, that's right. I like fighting with style. Humans are scum. I prefer elves, dwarves, and pixies, even. I could drown you in a single drop. If I'm to die, I'll do so sword in hand. Feathers are from hens. A witch. 
most villainous. A wee hint, Danny Jiggleless. Well, we've not had enough. Must banish her. I see no other path, sire. I'll never be imprisoned again. Learn to fletch. Looky here, if it ain't simply and wily. Get out, you baldy faced baby. To play with my prey, I enjoy that the most.
It's all right, we're alone here, just between us. You're lucky to keep your heat. Next time it'll be personal. Done it, no. I only loot corpses, except sometimes they're quite fresh. in Epoch's era's eons. When I finish with them, there'll be nothing left to bury. Kayam! Move it, you nag! And I'll ax ye too! We'll make sure of that. with a fire spell. <laughs> Just one more feather and we're done. Spells are a serious matter to be undertaken proudly with grace. As you wish, my lady. Humans are scum. I prefer elves, dwarves, pixies even. Oh, 
books have no honor. I could drown you in a single drop. Anything alive would be dead now. Killer spell. Uh oh. Rubbish in, rubbish out. They say. Pass and forget. Not I. Shoot true. As you wish, my lady. Studied my whole life through. Yeah, here I am digging ditches. Essaya Darien and Dol Blathana. The city is ravaged by rot. Blood stains these hands. I wish them forever cleansed. The elders must put a stop to this rebellion, else they will face devastation.
lovely it burns. Well, I'm a medic. I tend to know what I'm doing when I prescribe something. How did I fare, Mistress Letitia? Well, this time, yes? I could be your great-grandfather's great-grandfather. Oops. Bang. Kaboom. Shit, how'd that go? Tameria has yet to speak its last. would otherwise incinerate themselves. I am devoured only to be born anew. You must banish her. I see no to other To play answer. with my prey, I enjoy that most. Yes, my lord. Throne, crown, all Karak is ours. The day is nigh when all shall behold my beauty.
powers are yours to command. <laughs> 